Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 uh, index. Just want to remind you that the website and this video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts. So let's look at, um, at the uh, S&P. First thing is I want to uh, welcome new subscribers. Uh, thank you for, uh, for signing up for this. And uh, if, you're new, if you're new, you know who you are. And uh, I also want to remind you that, uh, that there is a, a new link in the members area of the site where I am providing uh, a link to this chart that I'm currently using. And, and whatever changes I've made in the chart during the day are included in that. And by the way, this is uh, at uh, freestockcharts.com where uh, using the uh, BATS exchange, you get to see real time uh, uh, market movement throughout the day as it relates uh, to this chart. And boy, today, uh, I have to count today as a real strong technical success. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, it wasn't a real strong monetary success because uh, we are so close to up here where I believe the markets may turn down in a serious way. Uh, I'm, I'm in cash. So, uh, <laughs> in one way, that's bad because, you know, I miss a 1.2% up day. But in another way, it's good because, I'll be honest with you, I can read the charts more objectively when I don't care which way they go. Okay? And uh, today, I didn't really care. And yesterday, I didn't care uh, because I got out of a short position uh, yesterday for... Uh, made money on the first one, lost a little bit of money on the second one, so it was an, it, it basically balanced out. But but uh, that aside, looking at the chart um, yesterday uh, on the seventh, I said it looked like we had made a triangle after we fell out of this rising wedge. Now the rising wedge is uh, <clears throat> is typically a bearish pattern, okay, and. Uh, the reason it is is because well, once this wedge breaks down, typically they start to move back down to the area, at least the area of where the wedge started. But I think what's happening here is a little different. I think we are going to end up back down here, but I, I think we're going we're gonna to have to go up and, and do a little bit more testing of some areas before that happens. And let me tell you what, what I kind of see uh, going on. To begin with, yesterday I mentioned this uh, triangle pattern, and uh, and I mentioned that that little move at the end of the day yesterday, I did not know whether I would consider that a legitimate breakout of this pattern or not. And uh, looking back on it, I still would make that call because that was what about about a four uh, about a point three and ch about point three to point four percent move over this uh, pattern. And when stuff like that happens at the end of the day, a lot of times, you, you know, the very first trades and the very last trades of the day sometimes just get flat out squirrely. So, um, so I, I wasn't quite willing to say, you know, that this is a breakout, but the open today made it a clear breakout. And uh, if you'll remember, we were looking at a, uh, I better draw this line back. I think I may have gotten rid of that line. We had this uh, little line drawn right here where I thought this uh, might have been a, a bear flag and, uh, and then uh, a, a, a breakout, and then we were going to back test that. That's another reason why I thought maybe that wasn't a breakout. Okay, but now we can get rid of that line because we know at this point we were in fact dealing with the triangle. And we knew that early on this morning after the market uh, really ran up pretty strongly uh, up about what uh, was up about eight, eight, nine, ten points right after the open. Then 
tell you what, let's zoom in on this a little bit more. We'll show you. Then, uh, even though it followed this little uh, support line running up out of that for the breakout, a perfect pullback to that top support line, uh, top resistance line rather, which is now serving as support. Let me change this where we can see things a little bit better in the video. There we go. So here is the uh, uh, upper defining resistance line. Here is our lower support line of this pattern. Broke out, came back for a perfect uh, tag. And by the way, look where it turned back. Right on this line that we had already had on the chart. Came down. This is a new uh, little pattern here. This was a descending wedge, which was very much smaller than this large ascending one, by the way. This descending wedge made a perfect pullback <clears throat> to the uh, resistance line, which now serves as support. And then it just started going up. You could see there was a resistance met at the neckline of the uh, head and shoulders pattern. Again, that's the big pattern that we had back here. I still think that line's very important. But uh, <coughs> met with resistance, sold back, and I made the comment, <coughs> excuse me, voice is given out, made the comment in our online forum that uh, if it gets over this neckline, I think we are going to, in, in fact, head up for 1280. And uh, I think that probably will happen. And why do I say 1280? Well, there are, there are a couple reasons. One reason is uh, if we measure this first reactive move as being the height of this pattern, come on, and then we, stupid computer, okay, here we go. And then we add that on to the spot of the breakout, which is right here. That takes us up to uh, actually a little over 1280. Additionally, I think we're going to come up here and we're going to back test that blue line again, which would happen a little bit over 1280. Additionally, <clears throat> this line right here, this little ascending line right, uh, right here that I'm highlighting, I don't think we're going to get over that. Uh, I would be very surprised if we do. If we get over this line right here, then this market's going to go top top out over uh, 1300 but th I think that's a long shot uh, at this point the other reason I say a little bit over 1280 look at this light gray line let's um, go back and show you what that line is that is drawn kind of in the middle of this little pattern that was in place before we had that gap down uh, back on the 31st of October so I would see that as being, uh, call it gap resistance. So I see one, two, and then I see two reasons, one, two, actually three, but this, this line right here is really sloping up pretty strongly, so I don't think that's going to be th that big a deal. But particularly this line and this line, I think, are going are gonna to probably turn this back a little over 1280. And where to then? Well, yeah, we'll have to just wait and see. Another thing that I'm seeing that looks a little bit suspect here is, again, if we just kind of connect these peaks, get the general feel for the shape of what this last day push was, you, you got it. It's looking uh, like, like uh, like a rising wedge and rising wedges days are numbered so I'm looking for this for a little bit more strength perhaps tomorrow uh, and then coming back down and probably uh, retesting this blue line down here again and guys to take a look at the uh, longer term what I think is going on here we were in uh, kind of in this channel off this bottom here once we bounced up strong out of that bottom we started to trade up roughly in this channel. It, it, you can see clear support here uh, on the uh, 10th, uh, the, the late the week of the uh, 17th, and uh, early in the week of the 14th, uh, excuse me, 24th. And you can see that once that broke down, 
we have back tested that line once, and I think now we're coming back for another back test. Um, and this is, I'm speaking prematurely here, but it would not surprise me if we might end up with a double top. Because a lot of times, let me tell you, a lot of times you'll see double tops, and what they really are is they are places where a channel has broken, and then there's been an extended back test as, as uh, uh, the price creeps up to do a final and good back test of that, and when it matches up with the previous high, you've got that previous high uh, giving people motivation to sell, and then you've got this uh, resistance line, uh, which is the broken support line. Now it serves as resistance, and things have a tendency to turn over there. So let's see if that happens uh, in, in this particular case. Uh, interesting to note also that a lot of times they say that the second peak of a, um, uh, of a double top tends to be more rounded. So this was a very sharp spike up. And now we're coming up, but we're doing it a little bit more leisurely. So you can see that may be what's taking place here. But as far as yesterday's call, um, if, uh, if you saw the video yesterday, uh, you should have known. And, and this, we're doing this to learn. I don't, uh, <coughs> I don't expect you to do what I do. Or, or to, or to, and nor do I want to tell you exactly what's going to happen in the markets because I don't know. All I can do is point out these little patterns and show you that this is the tendency. So yesterday, uh, with without without having quite a solid enough breakout, um, uh, I said that if this is a legitimate breakout, we should be looking for about 1280. Uh, I think I said 1280. Maybe I said high 1270s to 1280 and that's exactly what happened today so for tomorrow I'm saying I think that we turn back at this blue line and uh, let's see if this neckline uh, gives us any support and I want to show you one more thing this is what I'm, I'm not quite getting okay uh, to be honest with you if we look at this neckline from this pattern we can see that we are so close to it right here you see that we are very close to that line. And uh, as a matter of fact, we are over it. How did that happen? Just a second. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we are a little bit over that line. And uh, But what's interesting is, if I go to two other charts, if I go to the Dow Industrials, we're not over that line. If I go to the Russell 2000, we're not over that line. If I go to the Dow uh, Transportation Average, we're not over that line. If I go to uh, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is almost like a totally different chart than what we see in the Dow and in the Russell 2000. So uh, I'm thinking that this strength is technology related and uh, since the S&P is a broader uh, basket of stocks uh, than than either the Dow or the Russell I'm thinking that this is where we're seeing that little extra strength but you remember the last time the Dow hit the neckline was when uh, the S&P was over it back here in late October and and that's also the very day that the Russell hit it so let's just keep our eyes on this, see if we get that uh, back test tomorrow, uh, back to this uh, blue line, and let's see what happens if we get uh, up to that 1280, 1282 area. Let's see how good this chart works for us uh, if that's the case. Like I said, that is the minimum that I would expect from this pattern, which broke out early today, pulled back, and now is heading up. That's also where I would expect gap resistance from that gap down and it's also where we're going to start running into this blue line again so all of that says uh, and, and then we've got this little rising wedge pattern in this rally so hey let's keep an eye on it I appreciate uh, you watching this video and just have to remind you again that uh, if you are watching this on uh, November 8th thank you for subscribing if you're watching this and it's after the close on November 9th 
then you're probably not a subscriber. Look, it's not expensive, less than a cheap cup of coffee per day, and you can get this analysis after every close. Well, maybe one out of 20, I won't be able to do a video for one reason or another, but I'm, I'm shooting for 95%, and that's based upon my last year's track record. It's, it's uh, if you want to sign up for a whole year, you get a discount that way. It's one eighty nine ninety five, Folks, there are people who are charging that much per month for some services, albeit more than what I do. But I think this is a valuable tool. And uh, if you see if this works, just check it out. And uh, how, many, uh, how much information do you need to get out of these charts using these techniques uh, in order for it to be worth $189.95 a year or $19.95 per month. And every subscription starts off with a $4.95 two-week trial. So look, take care. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's uh, see what happens tomorrow.